Um, thank you, Dr. Lee, for the introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Rahul. Uh, today, I'll be presenting our research work on detecting software exploitable hardware vulnerabilities in process designs using our instruction fuzzer, DHUS. This is a joint work between Texas A&M University and Technical University of Darmstadt. The motivation for our uh, research work is the rising number of hardware vulnerabilities. Even the commercial hardware designs that undergo rigorous testing using state-of-the-art tools are becoming victims of hardware vulnerabilities. When such bugs in hardware get exploited from the software, they pose serious security threat to the secure applications running on software because most of the times, software applications assume that the hardware is trusted. Based on a study conducted in 2019, 63% of organizations have said that they experienced at least one type of data breach due to hardware vulnerabilities in the previous year. MITRE organization started recording the hardware vulnerability types in 2020, and we already have 113 of them. The rising uh, severity of this hardware vulnerabilities have motivated our community to research newer and more efficient bug detection techniques that uh, can complement the existing traditional hardware verification techniques like manual inspection, formal verification, and regression testing. These existing techniques, uh, they either do not scale well to large designs, uh, they are not automated or not efficient enough to detect bugs in the modern and complex hardware. Hardware fuzzing, on the other hand, is a new and promising approach uh, in hardware verification, which can scale well to large designs. Uh, it can be automated, and it can penetrate into the complex designs and find bugs in them. Before I get into the uh, design of our fuzzer, I would like to highlight the pros and cons of existing hardware fuzzers and discuss the type of coverage metrics they use using this case study example. The hardware logic we see here is a stripped down version of a cache controller inspired from the one in Ariane, an open source risk free processor. It mainly has three components. The combination logic one generates a valid signal that determines when the cache should be activated and perform the input commands. The MUX logic in two uses a password checking mechanism to secure debug reads. The MUX logic in three determines when the cache should be flushed. Now, uh, we insert three bugs in this example, one in each of the components. Bug one is in the combinational logic. It activates the cache even when the enable input signal is not one. This allows an attacker to bypass security mechanisms that rely on disabling the cache when performing untrusted operations. The bug in MUX logic two allows debug reads even when the password is incorrect, bypassing the password checking. And the bug in MUX logic 3 allows the cache to be flushed even when it is not enabled. This allows an unauthorized attacker to corrupt the state of the cache and perform uh, attacks like side channels. So in order for a fuzzer to detect these bugs, it needs to cover for the following features in hardware. For bug 1, the fuzzer needs to cover all possible combinations of input values for the combinational logic 1. For the bugs 2 and 3, the fuzzer needs to cover the select logic of MUXs for all possible combinations of input values. Now, let's look at the existing hardware fuzzers. RFuzz is one of the first proposed hardware fuzzer that can fuzz any hardware designs. Uh, it covers the select signals of MUXs. For example, if you look at the MUX3 here, its select signal is cell 2, and RFuzz checks if the cell 2 signal takes the value of 0 and 1 or not. Hence, it covers the MUX and MUX3. But the problem here is, uh, when we design hardware, MUXs can be coded in two types. MUX can be coded as a control logic, for example, using if-else constructs, or it can also be coded as a purely combinational logic. RFUS can detect the first type of MUXs, but if the MUXs are coded in the second format, it cannot detect them. So for example, in this case study, if the MUX2 is coded as a combinational logic, then RF RFUS cannot detect it. Also, RFUS doesn't cover the activities in the combinational logic and flip-flops, so the bugs one and two are also not covered by RFUS. Also, it is computationally expensive, so it does not scale to large designs. Next, we have Diffus RTL. Diffus RTL is an improved version of RFUS. It eliminates the scalability issues in it, and it is used to fuzz process designs. Diffus RTL 
covers the registers driving the select logic of MUXs. For example, here we have MUX3 and its select logic is the OR gate and flush and enable are the registers that are driving the uh, select logic. So defers RTL checks if this flush and enable registers take all possible combinations of values, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 or not. Hence, we can detect bug 3 using defers RTL. But defers RTL also has the same issue in the sense that it doesn't detect MUX2 and also doesn't cover the activity in combinational logic and flip-flops. So it doesn't directly cover the bugs 1 and 2. Also, the bug comparison happens at the end of the program in the processor, which is not very efficient. Hyperfuzzing is another type of hardware fuzzer. Uh, it proposed new semantics for SOC security properties, and it generates inputs to prove these properties. So it's very useful when we want to accelerate property checking in the SOC designs. But it's not really uh, applicable to generic hardware, like FSMs and combinational logic, because the properties are more for master-slave interactions and bus communications. We also need to write the security properties before we can start using the tool to verify the design. Also, it only supports a specific hardware simulator uh, called Verilator, so that limits its applicability. Last but not the least, we have uh, Triple et al. titled Fuzzing Hardware as Software. This is another novel approach towards uh, fuzzing hardware. Uh, what happens here is that we take a hardware design and convert it into C, C++ code, and then use software fuzzers to fuzz the hardware. The advantages of this tool is that we can quickly port the capabilities of software fuzzers to fuzz hardware. But um, it requires uh, simulators like Verilator, which can convert the uh, hardware design, which is basically a Verilog or VHDL code, into C or C++. And it doesn't support uh, Verilog constructs like latches and floating wires, so any bugs that are there uh, involving these logics uh, cannot be covered with this fuzzer. In summary, I discussed four existing hardware fuzzers. Each of them differ in terms of either the type of component they cover or the scalability, which is the largest design they first, or the applicability, which is the type of hardware they can fuzz, uh, the type of simulator they support, or the number of bugs they reported. Now, moving on to our fuzzer, DHAS, I'll first explain the coverage metrics used by DHAS and then the design itself. As we can see on the right, uh, we categorize the hardware logic into various components like flip-flops, registers, FSMs, control logic like MUXs, and combinational logic. And DHAS uses multiple different coverage metrics to cover each of these components. For example, we have the condition and expression coverage, which cover, the, cover all the uh, select logic and combinational logic for all possible combinations of input values in the hardware. Using this, we can detect all the three works that we previously inserted in this case study example. In addition, we also have coverage metrics like branch, toggle, and FSM, which cover the other hardware components, which overall capture all the activity going on in the hardware. These coverage metrics are, in fact, used widely uh, in the semiconductor industry and are commonly known as hardware code coverage metrics. This is the high-level diagram of our fuzzer, the HUS. The fuzzing starts with the generation of uh, seed inputs. The inputs are nothing but binary executables because we are fuzzing processor designs. Uh, hence, we use the instruction generator to generate the assembly level instructions using which we populate the input programs. The processor is simulated with the inputs from the database, uh, one after the other. And parallelly, we use a reference model, which is either an ISA emulator or a software model of the hardware to generate the golden outputs to compare and detect bugs. While the simulation is ongoing, we capture the coverage information and analyze it to determine if a new path or logic is explored in the hardware because of the current input. If yes, then we mutate the current input using 12 types of mutation techniques that we have and generate newer inputs and populate them in the input database. The change in ISA state uh, after the simulation of processor and the reference model for each instruction executed is compared and report, and any mismatches are reported. This cycle continues till we reach a desired preset time limit or coverage percentage. We first four real-world open source processors using DHAS. 
Uh, they are from RISC-V and OpenRISC ISAs and are commonly used benchmarks when evaluating hardware security tools. And we found 11 bugs, including eight new ones that led to five CVEs. Here I'm showing five of the eight new bugs that Dehus detected. We found bugs in the decoder and cache controller logic of Ariane. We found privileged register related bugs in MR1KX. We found bugs in the ALU of R200, so on and so forth. To demonstrate the uh, software implications of the hardware bugs found by our tool, we crafted two exploits that can be run as user-level programs. The exploit one can perform arbitrary code execution, bypassing the canary checks on uh, Ariane processor, and the exploit two can do privilege escalation on MR1KX processor. Uh, I'm skipping the details in the interest of time for these exploits, but you can check our paper for more details. Uh, as far as the coverage results are concerned, Dehus is able to cover more number of points and also faster compared to the existing traditional regression techniques or existing state-of-the-art hardware fuzzer differs RTL. And we also showed that the results are statistically significant in the paper. In conclusion, we designed a new hardware fuzzer to detect bugs in processor designs called Dehus. It is compatible in the sense that we can fuzz any HDL uh, using any commercial hardware simulator so it's compatible with the existing verification flows. It is automated starting from input generation to uh, detecting the mismatches. It is practical in the sense that it is easy to use. Uh, it is efficient in detecting bugs in real world processor designs and can achieve higher coverage than the existing techniques. We demonstrated the security impact of bugs using two exploits that we crafted. Dehus does have its own set of limitations. Features like uh, FPGA emulation, fuzzing non-processor designs, fuzzing for parametric properties of hardware, and fuzzing to detect site channel vulnerabilities are all part of our future work. I would like to thank uh, our sponsors, ONR and Intel, for funding our research, and also thank everyone here for attending the talk. Thank you.